Hey guys, this is Dr. Samir Islam, and I want to talk to you today about hiatal hernias and what questions you may get, get on the board exam. Now, the good thing about hiatal hernias is that typically in life and in, and in the board exam, there's not a lot of things you have to worry about this. The main things that you have to worry about is just its association with reflux and GERD, but there's not going to be a lot of questions about how do you fix hernias, how do you treat it, what are the symptoms from hernias. It's just not a big topic on your board exam. But it is important to know so that you don't have to, you don't miss those questions if they are on the test. So a hiatal hernia basically is just the herniation of the stomach upward into the chest through the diaphragm. So basically, this is the normal uh, GI tract. And you have the diaphragm that's right here. Then you have the esophagus and you have the lower esophageal sphincter in the stomach right here. When you, ha when you have a hiatal hernia, you have part of the stomach going up into the esophagus above the diaphragm causing this hernia right there and that's what a hiatal hernia is. It's the herniation of stomach upward into the chest through the diaphragm. Now there are three main types of hiatal hernias. One is a sliding hiatal hernia which is the vast majority of hiatal hernias in which you will hear about and you will see. This is basically when the gastroesophageal junction and a portion of the stomach are displaced above the diaphragm. So it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, and it goes down. And this is the vast majority of hernias which a lot of people will see and complain and say that they have. The next is the paraesophageal hernias, which is only about 5% of all the hernias that are out there. Basically, this is when the GE junction remains below the diaphragm while the fundus herniates into the thorax. So the way a paraesophageal hernia is different is that you actually have part of the fundus of the stomach going out above the diaphragm as opposed to going up into the esophagus. And this differentiates a paraesophageal hernia from a hiatal hernia. But keep in mind, the paraesophageal hernias are not that common. And then you also have mixed hernias between both a hiatal hernia and a paraesophageal hernia. These are very, very rare. But the two main hernias you should be aware of are hiatal hernias and paraesophageal hernias. Now most hernias are asymptomatic. Most people don't have any symptoms when they have a hernia, even though they may complain of their hernia hurting. In most people, it does not cause any symptoms. However, those people who have sliding hiatal hernias, especially if it's three centimeters or larger, may actually have worsening heartburn or reflux symptoms. So repairing that hernia has the potential to make reflux symptoms better. Typically, hiatal hernias are diagnosed incidentally either on an x-ray, or a barium swallow or an upper endoscopy. Typically on an upper endoscopy, we can see what type of hernia it is and how big it is and how big it is. Treatment for sliding hiatal hernias, medical therapy, and lifestyle modifications are usually enough to help out with that to decrease the reflux symptoms. If you have a hernia and you don't have symptoms, there's really no reason to treat that. For those people who have parasophageal hernias, having a surgical therapy may actually be the best thing because there's a risk of those parasophageal hernias causing a volvulus within the stomach to cause that stomach to necrose. I want to thank you guys for listening uh, to this lecture on hiatal hernias and hopefully it was beneficial for you in your board exam. Thanks and take care. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and if possible, share it with your friends as well.